Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the AMD RX 580 came in both 4 and 8 GB versions, with the latter making even more sense these days. From what I've seen you won't be paying much more for double the VRAM when looking for a used card. That said, I wanted to see how the lesser equipped version of this popular gaming GPU handles itself in 2024. I stuck this Sapphire model in an i5-2500K gaming machine in the previous video, and of course it was quite Quite restricted in most scenarios. Today we'll be giving it the chance to really stretch its legs. This 4GB version shares the same specs as its 8GB counterpart. It's got the full 2304 core count as well, no cut down shenanigans going on here. I've got an 8GB card on the way for a comparison at some point too, but for now let's focus on what this one can do these days in 12 tested games. So first of all we have Fallout 4 at 1080p with the Ultra preset and TAA. The default 60fps cap was left in place and of course we averaged that here. The 1% low was 54 and the 0.1% low was 43. If you're looking to play older or less demanding titles then there will be no issues with a card like this even the 4GB one and for older games it's still ideal. Baldur's Gate 3 is a lot more intensive, however with the low preset we were still able to hit near 60 FPS. Now of course enabling FSR will up this average but I didn't really feel the need to do so here because although we gained a few frames per second the percentile figures won't really improve. There was still quite a bit of inconsistency going on especially in and around busier areas. I mean it's an okay gameplay experience here but I think the VRAM is definitely playing a part in some of the problems in this one. Counter Strike 2 next, once again at 1080p of course, this time with the high preset and anti-aliasing off for an average of 140. Our 1% low number was 99 and our 0.1% low was 10, I distinctly remember the game freezing for like half a second when I got wiped out by an enemy player and that is responsible for that 0.1% number. Starfield up next and this was an absolute disaster. I had to use the lowest settings here. When I first attempted to play the game with 100% render resolution we saw just 27 frames per second and it was a pretty horrific experience to be fair. 19 FPS was that 1% low and the 0.1% low was 18 so it doesn't look that bad on paper. It just felt pretty awful to play if I'm being honest and it certainly didn't look like we were running at native 1080p. There were definitely some issues with the graphics here. This is the first game tested so far where we've had to enable some form of upscaling in order to try and increase the frame rate. But unfortunately nothing we could do could bump this up to anywhere near 60 FPS. In fact we saw just 35 which is a pretty weak improvement but this game and this card just don't get along together unfortunately 35 on average with a 1% low of 21 and a 0.1% low of 16 so not really any improvements to speak of here. The Witcher 3 up next with the next gen patch applied running in DX12 mode with the high preset, SSAO, screen space reflection set to low and TAAU. On average we saw 66 FPS with a 1% low of 54 and a 0.1% number of 34. So overall no complaints from me here even in and around those busier areas. The game performed very nicely with a few dips and drops below that magic 60 FPS number of course but not too bad at all. Grand Theft Auto 5 is also quite a bit older and just like Fallout 4 we tested at the start this one will run really well as well. Now 1080p again with the highest settings albeit with the advanced graphics off and FXAA netted us a nice average of 102 FPS. The 1% figure was 79 and the 0.1% low was 72. We could definitely afford to turn a few of those advanced options up a bit but bear in mind this will bring us closer to that VRAM limitation and we may start to see a couple of dips and drops below 60 or at least I did when I first booted the game and applied the maximum settings. 
Forza Horizon 5 with the high preset in TAA did give us a low memory warning when we first started up, but overall the average came back at 71, so can't really complain at this. We can drop to medium if we want to up those percentile numbers a little bit, but personally I don't see a reason to. I think this is a more than decent experience, and so I'd be inclined to stick with the high preset. You could always enable FSR perhaps as well if you want to bump things up a tiny bit performance wise but I'd happily play like this. For Cyberpunk 2077 I went with the lowest settings here. I thought this would be a good place to start and I'm pretty convinced I was right because 54 FPS was well it was a better than expected result actually but it did mean that we got close to 60 FPS without having to enable any sort of upscaling. The 1% low was 41 and the 0.1% low was 36. Now to be fair if you want to enable FSR and set it to quality mode 64 FPS will be your average in combination with a 1% low of 51 and a 0.1% low of 45 so it will boost the numbers up a bit without sacrificing anything really in terms of visual quality. Your thoughts and opinions on FSR may differ though and I always keep that in mind. Next up we have Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p with Digital Foundry's Xbox One X equivalent settings for an average of 62 FPS. This was a really nice result in my opinion. 50 FPS was that 1% low and the 0.1% number was 46 so even in and around towns and cities, Valentine, Saint Denis, this is going to perform pretty well providing you have a CPU that can keep up as well which to be honest isn't going to be difficult. You could pair one of these with a modern i3 and have yourself a fairly decent gaming experience at 1920 by 1080 across the board. Another game that surprised me is Helldivers 2. At the lowest settings here when I was aboard my ship I was getting like 38 frames per second and thinking well this is going to be a terrible experience when we actually jump into a mission but when we did do that and we started playing a mission 65 fps was the average i mean the frame rate shot up it pretty much doubled so walking around the ship it's going to feel pretty awful but uh, as soon as you decide to play a mission things will pick up as you can see here in fact it was a very consistent experience and even at the lowest settings with anti-aliasing enabled the game looks good. Fortnite was a game I had trouble with in the previous video, mainly because I paired it with an i5-2500K of course, but once we have more CPU power to play with, the RX 584GB will produce some pretty decent results. I found that DX12 mode runs smoother, the average frame rate may not be as high as DX11 mode, but overall it's a lot more consistent as is shown by these percentile figures. The 1% low of which was a very nice 69, and the 0.1% figure was 49. The average overall was 90. You could always drop things down to low if you wanted to, but I found this to be a nice sweet spot between visuals and performance. I thought I'd finalise with Alan Wake 2 because I mean this is just yeah we get a warning before we even fire the game up that says the graphics card basically is going to melt if you proceed <laughs> it says something like um, you, your card isn't designed to run this game something like that and it's clear from these figures that that is true now whether we were running at native or with fsr at the most intensive mode ultra performance which gives us like 640 by 360 internally we're not going to get any higher than 15, 20 FPS as you can see from these figures. So overall, the 4GB RX 580 is still okay in 2024, depending on which game you play of course. The 8GB card is going to be the better option and from what I've seen on sites like eBay, it's not going to cost that much more. Thanks for watching this one then, leave your thoughts down below in the comments of course and hopefully I'll see you again very soon.